for the press review. And Solange is with us here on set. She's starting off with some uh, alarming COVID news coming from Russia. I mean, the number of cases, the number of deaths broken records in the country, hasn't it? Yeah, yesterday's tallies in Russia are quite alarming. Around 1,000 people are dying in the country every day of COVID, uh, and infection rates are also soaring. Monday's uh, figures uh, show that there were around 34,000 new cases in a single day. As the Russian daily Komsom Oleskaya Pravda uh, explains, it says that, quote, the war has been lost against the coronavirus, noting that while Russia was one of the first countries to uh, produce its own vaccine, it still finds itself with a very low vaccination rate, around 32 percent, and Europe's highest death toll. Now, as The Guardian explains in an, art, in, in an article entitled You Reap What You Sow, uh, critics of the government say Russians were told repeatedly that the virus uh, was over. So many actually haven't taken the threat of COVID quite seriously. There are, there are also relatively few restrictions uh, compared to other countries, as well as a deep distrust by much of the population uh, of the government. So so few are right now ready to roll up their sleeves and get their jabs. Now to the passing yesterday of Colin Powell uh, across the globe, newspapers paying tribute to the US's first African-American uh, Secretary of State. Yeah, and as we can see on the front page of The Independent, people are taking a look back, papers are taking a look back at Powell's legacy. There's much praise uh, from fellow statesmen and women like Condoleezza Rice, who actually followed in the footsteps of, uh, of uh, uh, Colin, uh, Colin Powell as Secretary of State under George W. Bush. Now, in The Washington Post, she writes in an op-ed tribute, praising him, quote, as a man of integrity who believed in the military and its place in democracy, end quote. Now, as the conversation, the site, uh, note, the academic site notes, with a view from an African-American uh, history professor, Powell embodied, African-American studies uh, professor, uh, Powell embodied the dual and uh, powerful, but at times at odds, symbolism of being both a black man and a highly patriotic American. It is, quote, a tension that he faced throughout his life and his career, and one that, quote, required a dogged strength to reach the heights that he did. The press are um, not purely heaping praise on the former general, are there? There's some uh, critics as well. Yeah, and as The Guardian explains, the news of Powell's death is passing, uh, of his passing was met with some mixed reviews in Iraq. For some Iraqis, he is still lauded uh, for helping bring democracy to the country, but hated by others for uh, giving, in their view, a lie-filled uh, presentation, uh, which also brought bloodshed and instability to Iraq as well. Now, for Arab news, Powell was, quote, an exemplary general general in the first Iraq war, but one, too, that is stained by his push for the second war under George W. Bush. Now, a career book ended by America's wars in Iraq, Powell's error-filled presentation um, to go into the second war was something that Powell himself admitted, quote, a blot that will always be a part of my record, end quote. Now for some environmental news from Solange and a debate over hazardous chemicals. It's ranging both here in Europe and also in the US. Yeah, and I thought in light of our coverage of Breast Cancer Month, uh, it was kind of apt to cover these two articles. As the New York Times tells us, uh, American regulators are uh, laying a roadmap to outlaw certain so-called forever chemicals from everyday products. They're causing cancer, they are cancer-causing hazardous chemicals that are in our drinking water, they're in the pans we use, in the wrappers we eat, in the clothes we wear, and they stay around. You guessed it, they do not break down forever. Um, that's why they're called forever chemicals. Uh, so the good news is American regulators do want to outlaw many of these uh, PFASs, uh, but the bad news is there's also been pushback, namely from chemical industries. And this debate is not, as we said, as you said, uh, not only happening in Washington, it's also currently taking place in Brussels, as Politico tells us. In an article, uh, it's actually from, it's important to note, it's from a couple days ago, the site explains that a move, there is a movement to rid our products of these uh, uh, forever chemicals so that future generations don't have to live with them as well. But industries want it to be a chemical-specific uh, ban rather than a broad ban, despite the fact that toxicologists are saying we need to do a widespread ban. We're all forever Solange Mujan here on the press review. <laughs> and Solange has found us a couple of articles about the upside and the downside as well of uh, artefacts. Yeah, let's start with the downside. Mm. Le Monde takes us to northern France, uh, where there is a rock that is, quote, pissing everyone off. <laughs> that is the actual right. title of Le Monde's article about this rock. It explains that there's a seven-ton rock in the middle of uh, this northern French town. Mm. Uh, it's, it's actually a Neolithical polishing stone. Mm -hmm. 
uh, it's, it's classed as a heritage monument, and that classification has put the town on edge because the rock is centrally located, which means that projects like renovating the school, tearing down old abandoned buildings, well, they are not getting the go-ahead from conservationists. Uh, oh. So this town has kind of had it with the rock uh, that is pissing everyone off. <laughs> now to the upside of the of the of um, old cool things, the Times of Israel tells us uh, the diver off the coast of Israel has found a 900-year-old sword that dates back to the Crusades. The paper says that actually beneath that layer of uh, barnacles, the meter-long relic remains surprisingly in perfect condition. They uh -huh. say even after all this time, it may have been hidden in a cove somewhere, they believe. Uh, as for the diver, he graciously donated the loot uh, to Israel's National Treasures Department uh, and has been awarded for that a certificate of good citizenship. Yeah, well done, Tim. You know how to get the barnacles off that sword. Oof, no idea. Put it in the rock. <laughs> you see, that would solve the problem. Sword in the stone, that's yes. what we need. There you go. Solving all of Solange's Scalibur. problems today here at France 24.